Alright guys, BLM here and we are back with a new video. Now if you've ever heard me talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you know that I don't like Odyssey, but I really love Origins, with Origins being one of the best games in the franchises to me. So in this video, I'll be comparing the two games and give my honest opinions of them. So we'll jump straight into it, but first, obviously, this video will include spoilers for both games, discussing everything in both games, and there's a lot of talk about, so let's just get started. So we're going to start by talking about the open world. Obviously, Ancient Egypt for Origins and Ancient Greece for Odyssey. Both open worlds are massive and probably too big for their own good, with Origins having about a third of the map being just a straight desert. And my biggest problem with Odyssey's world is the fact that just the world is so boring, with so many islands that look exactly the same with a lot of locations that are literally just copy and pasted throughout the world, which makes Odyssey feel soulless. Now Odyssey does have open world naval gameplay unlike Origins, however because of this it leaves a good chunk of the map pretty empty and useless, kind of like the deserts in Origins. Both games utilize horse gameplay as well, which is pretty clunky in pretty much every game you'll ever play, but at least both these games have the follow road mechanic, which takes you to your objective, however I do feel like this was done better in Origins. In Origins, you can pretty much activate this from wherever you're at, it'll take you wherever you need to go, even if it's across the desert, even if it's up a mountain or whatever, however it doesn't really work half the time in Odyssey, where it tells you that there's no road to follow. And to be honest, a lot of this was probably just because this was a function that was copied over from Origins, something that they probably put more work into in Origins, In Odyssey they just decided to just put it in because they already had the code for it. The cities in both games are pretty boring, I never found Athens... Memphis or Crocodilopolis that interesting. I do think Cyrene and Alexandria are okay, but still not super memorable in the grand scheme of things. And something else that Odyssey does that I'm just not a big fan of is the fact that it has the camera so far away from the character. Which is something that they did to one, make the player focus on the open world, and two, make it so you don't notice the terrible graphics of the actual character model. But obviously at the end of the day, this just makes you feel disconnected from your character. So in terms of open world, obviously I would say Origins does a better job here. Now we're going to move on to the combat. The main difference between these two games is that in Origins, Bike feels a bit more heavy, making his attacks feel more impactful, while in Odyssey, the Mystios' attacks feel more floaty, and they do less damage to enemies comparatively. A lot of this has to do with the leveling up system in Odyssey, which is a complete mess due to Ubisoft's games as a service mantra, where they try to keep the player playing the game over time. Examples of this are that they made level scaling on all the time so that combat is never too easy. They also made it difficult to level up to try to get people to pay for microtransactions. There's also regenerating quests and forts and free DLCs that are released weeks apart, all to potentially bring people back to the game. They've also increased the level cap two separate times as of right now, once from level 50 to 70, and then now it's at level 99, which is completely ridiculous. Adding on to this, they also keep on adding ship upgrades to your ship. They get exponentially more expensive every single update. And the thing about this is that these ship upgrades are never needed. You never need them in the main game. They're solely there for Ubisoft to bring you back into the game so you continue playing it. All these things harm the game in a significant way, where instead of encouraging the player to come back, I feel like it disencourages the player to continue playing as most of these goals are, take a ridiculous amount of time to complete. And you get no real satisfaction from doing it, considering the entire game has level scaling anyway, meaning you'll never see any real improvement. Now obviously Origins also has microtransactions, however it never feels like the game forces it on you. Another thing I should mention that I do think Odyssey does better than Origins, is the way that abilities are utilized. Where Odyssey takes a lot from The Witcher 3 by making it impossible to completely fill out the entire skill tree. And even if you do, you can only use a certain amount of abilities at a time. And I do think this spices up the game, allowing you to create different builds. The problem with this is the fact that the game doesn't allow you to save these builds. Meaning you're gonna have to start completely over with these builds if you wanna do different ones. And also at the same time, something I don't like about these is that these really highlight the Mystios' superhuman abilities, which is something that's just completely ridiculous when you're looking at the lore. Especially for a series that tried to be historically accurate for years. Then again, Origins did the same thing, they had Hepzibah's sword, which was a fire sword, so, oh well. Overall though, I would say that the core combat is better in Origins, but again, I do think the abilities was an improvement upon Odyssey's gameplay. Now let's move on to the mission structure, and Assassin's Creed has never had good mission structure. It's actually been one of my biggest criticisms with some of my favorite older games like AC1, AC2, and AC4. Now, I have completely opposing views on the mission structures of Origins and Odyssey. I think Origins has some of the best mission structure in the entire franchise, with the fewest amount of annoying missions throughout. 
That being said, it's not perfect. I do think the eye emissions are pretty annoying, especially the ones when you're on foot, because they force you to use weapons that aren't nearly as good as the ones you would be using when you play as Bayek. But in complete contrast, we have Odyssey which has one of the most boring mission structures in the history of the franchise. Now, while it doesn't have the annoying tailing missions of AC2 and AC4, it does have a lot of fetch quests and a lot of killing random groups of guards that are given to you in the exact same way. And all these missions just feel like side quests instead of main missions. Whenever you go to a new area in the game, you usually meet someone who tells you about the, your current objective. But before you can do that objective, this person gives you three tedious quests that you need to do before you actually do the actual objective. And this literally happens nine times over the course of the three storylines in Odyssey. So obviously here, Origins has a much better mission structure. So now we're moving on to side quests where I do think Odyssey might edge Origins out on this one. Now where I found Odyssey's main missions pretty uninspired, I feel the same way about Origins side missions where most of them are either fetch quests or rescuing someone from a fort. There are obviously some exceptions to this, but considering there are over a hundred side quests in the game, I feel like only 10 of them were somewhat interesting. Now the side quests in Odyssey aren't that much better, but I do feel like there are certain quest lines like the Mykonos quest, the Diona quest, and the Minotaur quest lines that were all pretty good. However, if you really think about it, all of these are connected to the cult and Isu storylines, making it pretty questionable on whether they are actually side quests at all. Outside of those quests, the remainder are pretty much the same thing. Fetch quests and killing random groups of guards. Now this is a very narrow margin, but I guess I will say that Odyssey has better side quests. Now I think that's most of what I have to say about the gameplay of these games. So now we're going to move on to the narrative of these games. Overall Origins is a massive mixed bag, with some of the greatest moments in the entire franchise. But there are some pacing issues and the overall concept of an origin story isn't as realized as I would have liked. I mean, origin starts off with one of my favorite scenes in any game with Bayek's confrontation with Rujik. And pretty much every single memory corridor scene is done extremely well in this game, which they took out in its entirety in Odyssey. There are also scenes like when Bayek forms the Brotherhood, and also when Bayek and Aya talk on the beach, that are two more of my favorite moments in the franchise. When it comes to Odyssey, its narrative is just so boring. Even the first time I played it, I never cared about anything that was going on. And I always struggle to think about what's the best moment in Odyssey, because to be honest, I can't even think of it. The family storyline is pretty drawn out, with a lot of pointless missions that cause the story to feel so disjointed, and even when playing it as a new game plus, the story never captivated me. Though there were some okay moments, like the confrontation with Nikolaus, but there were moments that I just didn't care, like the death of Phoebe. The endings, as with much of the game, are ridiculous. With the good ending seeming to come out of nowhere considering Deimos is angry with you for like 90% of your conversation on the cliff, and then out of nowhere he just decides to switch sides. Just because you were like honest with him a couple times earlier on. Now for the other endings, there is an ending where you kill Deimos, but Marini survives. And this is even more ridiculous. Deimos was about to kill Marini, but once you kill Deimos to rescue Marini, Marini is angry at you for killing him and then exiles you and never wants to see you ever again. And then we got the other ending which involves Deimos killing Marini and then you killing Deimos right afterwards, which I do think is the best ending, but still not good. The cult storyline is a complete joke, with the culmination of it just being a confrontation of Aspasia, who is very predictably the ghost based on the hints that they gave you. And considering this is the hardest storyline to finish, I feel like this was a slap in the face, as nothing really comes out of this. But since I'm talking about this now, I might as well mention the cultist system, which is something that was not in Origins, but I do think it is a pretty cool thing in Odyssey. I wish they took it a step ahead, where I wouldn't mind the entire game being the cultist system, just with more cultists having actual storylines. But as it was in Odyssey, I guess it was fine. Now the Isu storyline is, I guess, the best one in the game. I do think the narrative around the Minotaur and the Medusa quests are pretty good, but the Cyclops and Sphinx quests are extremely lacking. I did like how we found Atlantis, and I did like Pythagoras, and thought that the Aletheia scenes were pretty interesting. But again, at the end of the day, between these two games, I do think Origins easily has the best story of the two, even though I do think Origins' story is still pretty flawed. Now let's talk about the characters. 
I feel like Origins is very top heavy, with Bike being one of the best protagonists in the entire series, having a complete character arc with subtle character development, and some really great character moments like the Rujik scene, the Mandunamun scene, and his jokes with Apollodorus. But outside of him, I feel like the cast is pretty weak. Aya is a mixed bag in the main game, who while well acted, I feel like is written inconsistently, though she is better in the hidden ones. The villains are a mixed bag as well, with Caesar and Cleopatra just being okay. I did like some of the Order of the Ancient members, like Tahaka and Medunamun, but some of them are completely underdeveloped, like Bernadike, Hetepi, and Flavius, who I do kind of love just because of how bad he is. I do also have a soft spot for characters like Hepsiva and Apollodorus, as I feel like they have some pretty funny scenes, but at the end of the day, they aren't the greatest characters. Moving on to Odyssey, we have the Mystios, who is easily my least favorite protagonist in the history of Assassin's Creed, as they're pretty much just a shell of a character. A lot of that being due to the fact that their personality is decided by the decisions you make. And because of that, they couldn't have any real character development throughout the game, and also this isn't helped by the mediocre to pretty poor voice acting. In terms of the other characters, most of them are either bland, like Stentor and Cleon, or completely ridiculous like Deimos, Barnabas, Socrates, and Alcibiades. I don't mind characters like Pythagoras, Marini, and Nicolaus, though again, at the end of the day, they aren't the greatest Assassin's Creed characters. Overall, while I do think Odyssey has a decent cast of characters, I feel like Bayek is so far above any other character that we've talked about that I would still give this to Origins. Now let's talk about these games' places in the series continuity, which obviously Origins does a better job at. Outside of some minor things like the creation and existence of Layla's Animus, I don't think there's anything that bad in Origins that breaks previous lore. But Odyssey, on the other hand... So, okay, I know that the series needs to progress, and I feel like Origins was a near-perfect mix of the new style of gameplay while keeping what Assassin's Creed used to be. But what Odyssey does is completely strip away everything to pretty much make this a Witcher game that takes place in ancient Greece. It takes away a lot of the philosophical ideals of the series, also losing all sense of historical accuracy and retconning so many concepts for the sake of making the game like The Witcher 3. All right, now finally I want to talk about the modern day, which was terrible in Origins. With nothing really happening and introducing us to a terrible character in Leila Hassan, now there were Isu messages that were pretty interesting and do set up the current goal of the modern day, but it's still bad. I mean, the scene where Layla returns to the Animus despite j almost just being killed by Templar agents is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Now the modern day in Odyssey is just as bad. Despite being larger in scale and having more modern day due to the Isu storyline, I feel like they forgot what made the modern day so great with games like AC1 and AC Brotherhood. There's more gameplay here, but just having a playable modern day doesn't make it good. It was great characters, mysterious storytelling, and thematic connections to the past storyline that were supposed to be integral to the modern day. And this game basically does none of this. And the scene where Mystia shows up in a suit to pass over to staff is another one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Overall, both of these modern days are pretty bad. I guess I would say Odyssey's is slightly better just because at least something happens in it. But again, this is like comparing a 3 out of 10 to a 4 out of 10. They're both really bad. So there we go. That is everything I had to say about Origins and Odyssey. Obviously, they are both flawed, but if you can't tell by this video, I definitely think Odyssey is far more flawed than Origins. With Origins being a top tier Assassin's Creed game for me, and Odyssey being pretty low on the bottom tier. Now, in the future, I'm definitely going to be making a video where I rank every single main series Assassin's Creed game, but I do need to replay a couple games before I do that, but... Stay tuned for that probably sometime next month. But yeah, those are my honest opinions on both Origins and Odyssey. So yeah, thank you for watching.